All right, for more, let's bring in former Middle East peace negotiator Gershon Baskin. Gershon, great to be with you as always. Uh, this accelerated cycle of violence between Hezbollah and Israel is prompting fears of an all-out regional war. Do you think that is where this is headed? It could be. We're being led by crazy men right now in the whole region, it seems, uh, that don't understand that what needs to happen is ending the war in Gaza to end the war between Israel and Hezbollah and de-escalate the region and move into a political process that will solve the problem of Lebanon and, of course, begin to put the Israeli-Palestinian conflict on the track toward negotiations. But the first thing that needs to happen is ending the war in Gaza, because without that, Hezbollah is not going to stop shooting at Israel, and Israel won't stop retaliating. Gershon, is there anything at this point, do you think, that the U.S. can do to try and engage both parties and lower the temperature? The key is in the hands of the United States. In fact, President Biden has to understand that he can use American leverage on Israel to get a deal done. Hamas has put a deal on the table. They've transferred it from me. I've sent it to the president. It's gone to the Qataris and the Egyptians and the Israelis. It is a deal that would end the war in three weeks. Israel would withdraw from Gaza. They would, Hamas would release all the Israeli hostages, and there would be agreed upon release of a number of Palestinian prisoners. We would then move into a cycle of de escalation in the north and dialogue between the Palestinian factions on figuring out who's going to control Gaza on the day after. Because everyone knows if Hamas stays in Gaza, there won't be a single dollar of money entering for rebuilding homes for two million people who are homeless today with the humanitarian catastrophe there that has to be dealt with at an accelerated pace. Over the weekend, uh, Hezbollah's second-in-command declared a new chapter in the confrontations, which he called a battle without limits. Uh, can Hezbollah sustain these strikes against Israel? No, they can't. Israel can do to Beirut and to many cities in Lebanon what they've done to the entire Gaza Strip, and I don't think we want to see that. The people of Lebanon don't want Hezbollah to escalate this war. This is, again, as I said at the beginning, a war of crazy men who, who have lost control and are not thinking strategically or logically. And this is why it's so important that the United States and other allies, the French and the and other European parties, play a, a constructive role now in getting us to de-escalation, while the Americans exert the extreme pressure that needs to be exerted on Israel to agree to a deal right now. The Qataris and the Egyptians need to pressure Hamas, and we can get this done. This war has to end in Gaza in order for the whole region to be safer. Uh, in an interview, uh, former IDF Defense Commander Brigadier General uh, Zivka Haimovich voiced his uh, skepticism about Israel's current military strategy against Hezbollah, uh, saying, while impressive, it will not be enough to force Hezbollah's leader into a truce. Uh, what do you think about that statement? Do you agree? hundred percent. There are no military solutions here. These are political conflicts that have to be resolved politically. The military means that are being used to fight the battles will only increase the power of the extremist. It will not weaken the extremist. They get more powerful as more force is used. And this is something that the people in charge need to understand. They don't. They have military minds. They don't think strategically. They act tactically. And they make a lot of bad errors that kill a lot of innocent people. Now, I want to ask you about Iran now. Do you see them directly intervening in this conflict? For sure. Iran is playing its proxies in Lebanon, in Yemen, in Iraq. And, and of course, Iran is a, is a very big problem. But again, this has to be dealt with politically eventually. The supreme leader of I Iran, Khamenei, is not going to be power forever. The president who was elected seems to be a more moderate person who's been able to use his persuasion so that the Iranian response to the alleged Israeli attack against Ismail Haniyeh on Iranian soil has been pushed back, at least for the time being. And we need that kind of restraint in the region. I don't think the Iranian people support the Iranian regime. It's just a matter of time before there's changes there. But the more we escalate and the more we use military force, the more we can ensure that the extremists in Iran and in other places will stay in power. Gershon, thank you so much for your time today and for your insights. Always appreciate it. Thank you.